Hi, my name is Zaim Iskanda. So this video will be about a certain former F1 World Champion's son. I'm referring to a certain driver that actually had 91 victories, 68 pole positions, 77 fast slap and 308 starts in his career. And he... I'm not sure of his list update about his health yeah but his son is going to participate in the young F1 young driver's test uh, in Bahrain from the 10th to the 11th of April that will be in three weeks time if I'm correct yeah but um, rumors are circling around that he might be driving either the SF 70H or the Sauber Alfa Romeo Racing C38 around Bahrain so I presume that it will be the Sauber because Ferrari Ferrari would take him maybe in the next young driver's test maybe will be in Hungary or in uh, Bahrain at the end of the year but he, he will not they will not take Mick Schumacher because he doesn't have mile he doesn't have a mile he doesn't have mileage in an F1 car yet so maybe Sauber would take him because Sauber is a part of the F Ferrari family yes and speaking of Ferrari family there is a few drivers connected to Sauber one of them is Mick Schumacher himself as you guys know Elliot, Fioko, um, a few other drivers from uh from from uh f2 i was going to say gp2 yeah i i'm used to s referring that series as gp2 s seems a bit odd yeah they they refurbished it since 2017 i think yeah they call it f2 because before that they call it gp2 so yeah it's a bit of a tongue twister for me to say it out so yeah sorry yeah uh the likes of Elliot and fioko and Shum mick schumacher and some other drivers are related to the ferrari academy uh yeah academy fda the ferrari drivers academy yeah the short form is fda yes um that Cal calderon and um that core korea juan manuel korea is a guy tentia calderon is not a guy it's a lady so they are related to the Sauber team themselves because Sauber has their own uh, their own uh, team in they bought a team in F2 called Charus uh, I think I told you in one of my videos right about uh, Korea yeah Sauber signing up signing up Korea so yeah it's not a name of a country, it's a name of a person and he's a, an Ecuadorian born American uh, racing driver yeah as you guys know I don't have to go deep into it because I already told you guys in my previous video regarding his uh, Sauber snapping him up for the yeah, young driver's test yeah uh, sorry young driver uh, uh, the test and development driver role yes yeah uh yep sauber and all the other f1 teams will actually be participating in the young driver's test uh, mick schumacher 
would would I would maybe dra- get a call up by Ferrari su- subsidiary team or the better calls it the team uh team B the Sauber team as you guys know but I might I would just refer it to a subsidiary team so yeah because the power units and all the systems in the car is powered by Ferrari so yeah that's why there's connections even Raikkonen is a former Ferrari driver and also a former world champion with Ferrari and he's a he's the last world champion after Schumacher nobody else has won a title with Ferrari Masa almost won but he but somebody stole off his craft guest something G E S P yeah uh, my pronunciation is a bit odd so yeah sorry back to my story yes Mick Schumacher Calderon uh, Elliot Korea might be included in the test for the young drivers test for for Mr. for Sauber Elliot and Mick Schumacher as you guys know they are related to FDA yeah uh, FDA stands for Ferrari Drivers Academy or Ferrari Driver Academy yeah so yeah they might not get a chance to sit in the Ferrari if they don't have enough mileage under their belt right uh yeah i don't know they might need a few runs in the sauber team first before ferrari could call them up for a drive elliot and uh kalam elliot i think he's british make schmacker as you guys know he's, he's german so yeah those two drivers might have a chance to be to drive a Ferrari but maybe in the other two tests that will be held in the middle of the year and what and one at the end of the year the end of the year maybe in Abu Dhabi the other one the the other test will be held uh, in May or June like June or July around that period of time yes so by then they might have enough mileage under them and by then I think it's after the British Grand Prix right yeah they might get called out for a few practice sessions with for uh, practice sessions with Ferrari or even with um, uh, Sauber okay Elliot and Schumacher so yeah there is a lot of hype about Schumacher, um, Mick Schumacher. I can understand the hype, but to me, he said it's no pressure uh, for the journalist to be comparing to his father. Yeah, he, he has a lot of confidence to say that. Yeah, tr- trust me, and he not he, not. He, even confidence he has confidence and he has confidence and guts to say that or in a a rough way i would say he has the balls to say what he said to the journalist yeah in a a rough way he had his he had thick balls to say what he 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 shouldn't say to the journalist because to me if you compare a son of a driver okay that doesn't mean he will be as successful as his father no but there is a few uh, like uh, let's say Damon and Rosberg they are the couple of drivers that the father has won an F1 title uh, in yeah, uh, Formula 1 title uh, Formula 1 World Championship and they have followed the footsteps of the father yeah 
but sometimes you are just unlucky yeah you are just unlucky you couldn't follow the footsteps of your father winning a title so the hype around Schumach Mick is because of his father Michael so I don't understand why the attention is on this on him because to me if you give too much hype by the time when he reaches to, to a point that he will be in F1 he will his statistics and his father's statistics will be compared race in and race out and that is not a good thing for a driver to be compared to another driver because his father is from a different generation he is from a different generation and he is born in 1999 yeah he's 20 years old like some of my school juniors from my secondary and primary days they are yeah they are, they are the same age as Mick Schumacher so yes so the hype around Mick Schumacher is just because of his father winning races, winning championships, winning awards, FIA awards. That's why to me, if you want to see a person perform, don't start comparing him with, with, a, with a certain driver or let alone his father. Because his father is from a different era so he might look up to maybe Vettel or this current era maybe Vettel or Hamilton so so just compare him to Hamilton and Vettel why you have to compare him to his father that will add a lot more pressure and the hype behind it would, would increase anxiety anxiety towards him when he enters F1 and races with other uh, competitors because of his pedigree of his uh, family name Schumacher yeah pedigree of his family name oh high vocab words are popping out for some reason you know why it will cause him to feel outrageously what's the word uh, outrageously not comfortable uh, what is the word I'm trying to look for oh Oh sorry, I. Uh, oh. Yeah, so he might be compared to his father, race in and race out, and uh, then that is utterly ridiculous, because if you you compare a driver to with a driver in a different era, okay, especially like father and son. They are both in different areas of racing. Yes, they are both in different areas of racing. You, you can compare them. Schumacher race with the likes of Senna, who had pedigree. The likes of Wildhof, the likes of uh, Barrichello, the likes of Montoya. Heikkonen Fransen Heifel uh, That four times old champion Ah yes Prost And Hill Yes All of those drivers had 
had the guts to challenge him including Raikkonen and Alonso. So the pedigree of Schumacher's name, the family name of Schumacher in, a, in F1 is at a very 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 high ped, is in a very high pedigree. So if you start comparing him with his father, that would put him under a lot of pressure even though he said to journalists and that he is okay being compared to his father. But at a certain point of your career, when you enter the big time Formula 1, when you, he enters Formula 1, every fan, you don't care whether it's a die-hard fan or a neutral fan, and including pundits, will start comparing him with his father. And it's not a good thing to be compared. Because it might put pressure to him even though he has the qualities to become a multi world champion a multi race winner and winning various of awards in the FIA galas that doesn't mean you could compare him with his father his father is in a different category that is called legends for the likes of for for instance Senna Hill Wilderf uh, Stewart Prost Raikkonen Alonso uh, Vettel Helmonton all of those are considered as legends yeah so he needs to create his own story in F1 like everybody says he can follow his father's footsteps yes but if you compare him to his father it's like you are you are comparing different eras of F1 cars in uh, different eras of F1 drivers and cars yeah and jumbling them up together to make what Malaysian call in uh, in inverted commas rojak okay so yeah to me even though he he has pedigree, he has the talent, he has the qualities, he has everything, you name it. But I don't encourage to hype him up. Like certain drivers, they can afford the hype, like Verstappen can afford. Uh, like... Helmeton can afford like during the younger days of Vettel he used to be referred to baby Schumacher yeah because he he idolizes his German compatriot yes so yeah comparing drivers you can compare but to be logic you don't compare these young drivers that are coming through with with your peers okay, Verstappen is already compared with Vettel and so on including Schumacher himself Michael himself, sorry, Michael Schumacher himself. He's called, uh, and yeah, he he is going to smash all Schumacher's records, including Hamilton's one two, Vettel's one two. He has already smashed a few records that Vettel set. The youngest race winner, the youngest race leader, the youngest multiple winner in F1. He, you name it. 
Verstappen has broken all of Vettel's rec- record except for a few. But the others? No. Let's see, the youngest world champion. He's not a world champion yet. So. The youngest pole seater. Hmm. No. Unless. Someone under the age of 18 who just jump in an eleven car, put a car on pole, then he will destroy with this record of being the youngest pole seater at the age of 21 and 73 days old during the Italian Grand Prix in 08. That is 11 years ago in September. Yes, I clearly remember. And it was my... Tenth birthday, ah, uh, I was having my birthday dinner with my family in Chile's. So I went to the bar to watch the TV, to watch the qualifying session, and Vettel put himself on pole ten years ago. I was eleven years ago. I was ten years old. This year I'm going to be twenty one. He is. Eleven years older than he used to be. He's thirty-three this year, Vettel. So yeah, eleven years. His record of the youngest four seater will sit for a very, very long time, and maybe Lando might get to destroy it in the future if he is in a championship winning car. But for now. Vettel's record of the youngest pole seater will remain. The youngest race leader, the youngest race winner, multi-race winner, is all destroyed by Verstappen. So yeah, in the future, Mick Schumacher will also be compared to Verstappen. The likes of Verstappen, Vettel, his uh, mixed father, Hamilton. Uh, and a few other legends, including maybe Raikkonen or Alonso. Yeah. So I, I, I seriously urge the media and the journalists not to hype him up, because hyping him up now is okay. But when he gets into the big time, when you keep hyping him up, he will feel the pressure. You feel the pressure to better all his father's achievements. Pressure is good, but at a certain level, it's good. But when you go above, above the limit of pressure, that's when it can literally destroy you inside out. Trust me. Trust me. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going, before I end this video, I'm sorry, it, it, it took almost 25 minutes. I'm going to end it now, because if not, I'll keep emph- emphasizing the same point again and again. So, I'm wishing good luck to Mick Schumacher in the future, present and future. And hopefully, I will see him on the F2 podium, let alone in F1, winning races, winning championships, winning a lot of awards from the FIA. And seriously, can you journalists and media just shut up for once? Yes, I urge you guys to shut the hell up for once before I shut my video off. Just shut off for once and give that guy, that young man, space to develop into a future. One of the best drivers in the future. Why you don't give hype to Tikam? You don't give hype to Elliot? But you guys give hype to Schumacher. 
mick schumacher the son of a seven times world champion just because his father is a seven times world champion you guys just keep hyping it up to me is one sided why when hamilton came out came up to formula one Hulkenberg, Rosberg, Vettel, Perez, Gutierrez, Givenazzi, they, they were not as hyped as Sh- Mick Schumacher. Why are you guys hyping Mick Sh- Schumacher up? So yes, I don't really spot you guys doing this. Because it's utterly ridiculous. Trust me. So, I would like to say good night before I start repeating the same thing again. And I have done that a few times in this video because I'm emphasizing it. Yeah. And don't forget to watch my other videos on my channel, especially about the Bahrain Grand Prix uh, preview yeah, I'll do it in the next couple of days and I'm going to sign off don't forget to subscribe to my channel Zaymi's channel like and comment out down below and see you on my next video the preview for the Bahrain Grand Prix and bye